All right. We've come to the end. Thanks for staying with me. Hit like, subscribe, and share with your friends who have DGXs. Bye.
Just jamming with my friend Keys.
Hello there, I'm going to show you today how to use your DGX670 as a workstation to play VSTs from the computer. So, it's quite cold, so I'm all dollied up today. We're going to take this USB cable and we're going to plug it to where it goes behind your DGX670. We're then going to take this, we're going to route it, and we're going to put it in the USB that goes into the computer. So this goes into the computer, okay? Please note the uh, actual USB end that goes into the computer so you don't make any mistakes, okay? Now, we're done with that, we're going back to the computer, to the door, so that we can play our VST. And for those who might be wondering the difference between the door and the doors and VSTs, DAW, door, just stands for Digital Audio Workstation. And that's what we use to get audio into the computer. And then the VST just stands for Virtual Studio Technology. So we can use this to play virtual instruments on your digital audio workstation. The door that I have open is a software program known as Mixcraft. It's a very simple, very affordable, just so ridiculously affordable program. Okay, so I'm going to use Mixcraft today. I'm going to start off with something from scratch. Take those off. And let's see if the signal is actually getting into the computer. So if you play, if you play and you don't see anything over here, it means that nothing is happening and therefore we are not getting any signal going in. So there could be a number of reasons why that happens. It could be a faulty cable. It could be that... Okay, so I know that it did read the cable just there. But it's saying the last USB device you connected to this computer malfunctioned. Windows doesn't recognize it. So I'm going to go in here to the preferences and see if I can do something about that. I'm going to go to MIDI. Put this in and see if it works. So, all right. So I'm hoping that it recognizes it now. Probably it wants this one. There we go. So it works. Okay, so lesson number one is if you don't get a sound out of your DGX 670 when you plug in the USB, just try the other USBs. Okay, and this is just the vanilla flavored piano that comes with Mixcraft, but we're using the DGX to play the sounds. Now, I have a few VSTs here that I could choose from. So I'm going to click on the keyboard icon, go to VST Instruments, and one of the VSTs that I have to play around with is called Stylus RMX. It's like a drum kit, if you will. So I've taken that down, and now all you're seeing is what you should, okay? So I'm not sure I'll get around to editing this immediately, but I will eventually. So it's going to be rather rough. So this is the Stylus RMX. If I click here, let me get rid of all this stuff. And the way this is used, you've got various grooves, various patterns 
and these patterns can be used to create music. So that's just one. Uh, this is Hiccup Island. Okay, here's another one. Data Life. So let's just take that. We just take it and we are going to, uh, we're going to drag it. Click this and drag this in there. And this is a Stylus RMX from um, Spectrosonics. It's saying switch to Tempo 120. I'm going to say yes. Switch to 120. And then I'm going to close this. And that's going to be our, our drums right there. Uh, let's do it to 16 measures like that. All right, it's here. So 120 is a bit too quick for what I'm feeling right now. So I'm just going to use 90 and it should adjust the tempo. No more like that. All right, 97 will do. So those are the drums. And then I'm going to find a decent piano VST. Let's click on this. And I'm going to choose my. Oh, I don't, I don't see one of the ones I would have liked because I am on a different um, bit rate. Yes. So I'm just going to choose something that's here. Let's choose a lounge lizard. This comes free with the program. It's uh, hit solo so I can hear it. Okay. So even though I'm playing my DGX670, you got to remember the sounds are not the DGX670 sounds. I want to make that perfectly clear. So this is Lounge Lizard, Rhodes. It's got different sounds. It's not bad. It's a chorus. So let's play this. So it's going to give me a four, a four count. Uh, count me in on the count of four. Three, four. So that's that, and it's looped. And all I need to do is select my next instrument. Again, find my VST. For this one, I will probably use, if I can, the Trillion. And it takes quite a while to load and might even crash. <laughs> so, giving you a warning, it might crash. Let's see if I can invoke the Trillion from Spectrosonics, one of my favorites. These are high-end VSTs, if you will, um, about $399, $400, maybe a pop. Not sure what exactly it goes for now, but it's a very uh, superior bass VST that has samples from John Patitucci and Abraham Laboreal and 
Marcus Miller as well so let's click on extra base legends I have a, a number of favorites here let's see what this one is this is extra uh, Laboreal finger funk let's see what that gives me there's so many windows that will pop up open when you're using these VSTs you got to be able to uh, handle them okay here we go okay just just for the illustration very bassy obviously I like this one from Marcus Miller finger funk I think I've got what I need so let the fun begin we'll close that and here we go on the count of four seems like I anticipated the change too quick so I'm gonna punch in in the middle somewhere but let's see where it happens okay let's see what happened there Must have changed too quick. Okay, let's try it again. <laughs> let's see what happened. I got a little bit ambitious there with my chord changes. It was all improvised. So let's check it out. Okay, so I went back up to E flat. So let's start the walk down again. that's it I think uh, we got everything we need we're just gonna put one more track for this demo and uh, we're gonna try to use something from the synth family actually a few I'm actually doing the wrong thing there we go I'm gonna choose a synth one of the ducks the ducks. Ducks are very helpful. Uh, 
So I'll just play along um, and just show you what you can do um, as far as uh, this is concerned. Let's go. So I usually start off with um, just the drums and get you the feel. Here we go. Some bass. Alright, I think that should give you a fair idea of what you could do using this as a workstation to drive all your other activities. I hope it made sense.
extremely scrappy, I know. But thank you for joining me. I'm going to shut it down. First and foremost, thank you very much, subscriber, for tuning into the channel and subscribing. I know lots of you have purchased a 670 from Yamaha, but you're wondering how to maximize some of the options. For those of you who are learning and you've just begun the journey, I know you would love to see notes displayed as you play them and chords as one of our friends on the channel requested. So I'm going to show you today how to activate the screen settings so that you can see the notes you are playing. For example, see that? That's A sus 2. You can see that very clearly. What about this? A flat sus 2. What about this? A flat minor. It's A flat minor. That's what it's uh, picking it up as. Now what about this? D flat major 7, capital M for major. What about this? D flat minor major 7. What about this? D flat 7th. What about this? E major 7 flat 5, the family of my favorite chords. I love the flat 5s. That's F sharp major 7 flat 5. So how am I getting it to display all this information? Follow along and I'll show you the steps. Let's start off with a keyboard that has been turned off. And I'm powering it down so that you can see everything from scratch. Let's turn it on. When you turn on the keyboard and you've given it time to boot up, which by the way is a very quick boot up time compared to my other keyboards like the Motif XFA it takes forever to come on. But now this is on, you realize that as you move on to the part on and off section, you can see left is off and main is on. And therefore, when you come over here to play anything, you don't see anything because you have not activated the secret sauce for your DGX670. The secret sauce, my friends, is in pressing the left button. And when you come over here, check to see if it does show you the magic note. So that is showing me C, C1 plus 5. So it's showing me that I'm playing a C and a 5. Anytime it shows C1 plus 8, it means you're holding down one note only. So it could be showing you C1 plus 8 if you're holding down just one C, or even if you're holding down two Cs. The bottom line is you're holding down just a C. Now, if I put in a C and a D, low C and a higher D, it shows that you're holding a D over a C bass, if that makes sense. And that's what I'm doing here, a D over a C bass, or an E over a D bass. Take a look at that. See that? An E over a D bass. If I'm just holding an E, it shows E1 plus 8. No matter how many E's you're holding down, I'm holding down two E's. So you understand that. Now, for those of you who have not split your keyboard into left and right using the split point functionality, what you'll realize is as you play the higher notes up here, you may not see those notes appearing on the screen. There is something you need to do so that no matter the notes you play, it is displayed. Okay, and that last piece I'm going to show you by going to Menu, and you want to select Split Point slash Chord Fingering. See that? So let's go ahead and select Enter with the Split Point Chord Fingering highlighted. Let's go ahead and hit Enter. Now you hit Enter, you can see the keyboard displayed you've got the split point chord fingering activated. Now, what you need to do is come over to section four over here. And as you press either up or down, you can see the notes changing. Now, if I 
press this all the way down to where it was initially, that is C3, right? C3. Now, if I exit, I want to show you what this actually does. So, I'm holding down C. There's another C. And another C. And another C. So, this seems to be working okay. But, if I go back in and I adjust this such that it starts at C3 and ends, let's make it end somewhere really little, like C4. So I've only got one octave, right? Let's exit. So now I'm playing a C, right? And you can still see that. But when I come over here beyond the C4 range, it's gone back to my main piano, and now you can't see anything. So you need to make sure that what you have over here is actually the same sound as you have on the left. Now, if you didn't notice, when you hit left, like that, you can select a different sound. So, if I came over here and selected strings, hit enter, and now I've got strings. Over here, at the bottom, that's strings, whereas up here is piano. Anytime it is playing the higher octave sound, you will not be able to see the notes. But anytime you're playing the lower sound, see that? Now you can see the notes. So the summary, what I'm trying to show you is, you need to ensure that the entire keyboard is split to be just the left sound. To do that again, come into menu, hit enter, make sure that your keyboard covers the entire, that orange bar, you want to make sure that orange bar goes all the way from beginning to end. All right, so let's hit the buttons to make it go all the way up. That's step one, and step two is the orange bar to go all the way up. So what this is telling you is you have a you have, well, that's the style, but you have the split point going all the way to C7. The style is also going all the way to C7. The style is what is activated when you are playing one of these styles. So, now because of what I've activated, it means that the style encompasses the entire keyboard. So even if I play all the way up here, there's pretty much no sound. The upper register is gone. See that? There's really nothing. But if I come over here and I tone this down to roughly a C2, but I leave the left split point over here what I'm gonna have is the strings up here. That's the strings. But I also have strings somewhere over here. And the split point is relegated to C2. So that, I believe that should be it. Okay, that's, so that's C2, pretty much. So the, the fingering function won't play anything up there, but it will below C2, if you get what I mean. Okay, I know it's all a little bit complicated and intense, and I know I'm moving the camera around a lot. This is the best I can do for now, my friends. I hope this helps you. So the summary is, if you want to have more bandwidth to play on the left, after you have split, just make sure you bring this down 
a little bit more. Just bring it down a little bit more, like that. And in that way, you'll be able to play. You also have a section for the left sound. So this is all the left, and up here is the right. So you have piano, strings, and then you have the accompaniment, if you get what I mean, okay? So let's start again. Going back to the beginning. Let's exit. If you want your keyboard to display the notes, all you need to do is come over and ensure that left is activated. Go into menu, split point, and make sure that under left over here, make sure this goes all the way. You see how it looks like the keyboard is overlapping? This is the left. Make sure that the left goes all the way to the end. And in the same token, if you want the accompaniment to be spread across the entire keyboard, do the same thing under style. Just hit so that the orange bar goes all the way to the end. Otherwise, the orange bar being just halfway will restrict the accompaniment feature to just halfway. Okay, I guess probably the best way to, to experiment with this is to just turn it on and check to ensure that the split point is where you want it. Let me show you another example. Okay, so this goes all the way to C7 now. So wherever I play, wherever I play, I can change the sound. See that? Whether I am down here or up here, it changes. Now, if I move this down, all the way down to C2, when I try to play to change it up here, it won't. But down here, it will. Okay? I hope that helped answer the question. I know it's a long video, but I'm hoping you got value from it. Bye for now.
Welcome again, my friends, to yet another demonstration of the DGX670. It's a keyboard that has become very popular in the market because of its price point of $850 or even less. We're going to start off by turning on the keyboard. There's the on button, extremely easy to turn on, and the boot up time is extremely quick. As you can see, it is already right there, all set and ready to go. I'll just go over the screen with you very quickly. And in order to navigate the screen, you're going to have to use these buttons. It is not touch screen. It's in color, which is nice, but it's not touch screen. It has a dial. It has a tab functionality to move between pages. And it has some further navigation buttons here and here and here as well. So it could be seen as a little bit clunky, but it's, it's worth the effort. Trust me, it's worth, worth the effort. So I'll be showing you how to navigate the keyboard. Let's start off with the very first sound that you see on this keyboard, and it's the CFX Grand. It's a piano sound. And very clean, nice sound. I'll just play a few other piano samples for you here. Let's go over to the tremolo suitcase and try and adjust it so you can see what I'm up to. That's the tremolo suitcase. Here's smooth time. So lots of impressive sounds, very clean and pristine, okay, with a lovely screen to boot. As far as other sounds, you've got organ sounds. Guitar, like nylon string or concert. On the more aggressive side, we've got the Guitar Hero. Another one called Rock Legend. If that's your kind of thing. Semi-acoustic. Also got the jazz guitar clean. Moving on to other voices, you've got very nice string sounds as well. And I'll just turn this so that you can see a little bit more what the panel looks like. Here's the panel. It's very clear which sound is which. We got violins there, studio strings there, and to navigate, you just use these buttons to go back and forth, up and down, sideways. So it's not touch screen, but it's quite easy to navigate, okay? 
movie strings, strings pad, and it's very easy to navigate, like I said, those are the selections. You got piano, organ, guitar, strings, you got brass and woodwind, synth pad, and so on. It's very uh, straightforward and easy to navigate. And on this side, you've also got a bunch of buttons there for songs. Um, you've got recorded songs, pre-recorded songs you can use to practice. You've got styles, as you can see there, pop and rock, ballad, dance, R&B, country, and blues, standards and jazz, entertainment, Latin and world, and pianist. And over here, you've got the controls for you to change the styles and um, some additional buttons for navigation. So it's very well um, spelled out, very well arranged. And at the back here, behind the keyboard, you've got you know, the, the input jacks uh, for you to either put a mic in, for you to put instruments, other instruments in. It also has Bluetooth functionality. You can play from your phone into it. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. It's got so much current day, present day functionality that if you were on the fence regarding this keyboard, I'll just say get it while you can, get a new one while you can, because they won't be around forever, you know. All right, so we've gone over some, most of the sounds. Uh, we've got some nice brass sounds, trumpet. Got sweet trombone. We've got some pretty impressive uh, trumpet sounds, like the big band trumpet. <laughs> got trumpet falls. <laughs> oh. Trumpet shake. <laughs> Very nice sounds. Moving on, we've got some sax sounds, rock sax. Soprano sax. Alto sax. Baritone sax. section got a really nice flute here jazz flute sounds got all sorts of really cool kits power kits all sorts of really cool kits so on, as well as other percussive sounds. So on and 
and so forth. Um, synth pads and synth. <laughs> That's a club lead oxygen. <laughs> Vapor pad. Also in the strings and choir, we got some really interesting voices. Gothic Vox. Mm, MMH. Got one called Voices. And Chamber Strings. So when it comes to the instruments, there's really no argument. The instruments are really, really good. The next piece that I'd like to feature is the styles. And while I'm featuring the styles, um, I'll just go through a few of them, but I'll also talk a little bit about the equalization of the sounds. Because the sounds are good, but you might want either a little bit more uh, volume or a little bit more EQ. So I will endeavor to show you that as well. So let's go over to this camera and let's show what exactly is happening here. Okay, here we have styles. And to get a style going, just go up here and choose either pop and rock, ballad, or what have you. I'm going to start with pop and rock. Okay, and in order to see what exactly you're choosing on the screen, after selecting Pop and Rock, you can still see it's, uh, it goes to the, the list of what you have. So if you want the very beginning, you have to hit the back button, especially if you have already visited that page in the session. It could be on a different page, so you always need to get it back to where um, you need. So if I hit Start, like that. So that's not exactly what I want. So I'm going to go back to rock and pop all the way back to the beginning and hit enter. You see the enter button here? Just hit enter and that selects what you are really looking for. So I've got contemporary guitar pop. And is that really what I want? I think that's where it all starts. Under, okay, under pop and rock. If you keep pressing the page, it keeps moving forward. So you got to remember to always use this to go back. Let's hit start. And now we can hear some sort of drums. It's not as, doesn't sound that active. Um, and that's because of the selection. You know, you could always choose pattern B. So this is pattern A, this is pattern B, pattern C, pattern D. So you've, assuming you selected the very first thing, contemporary pop, to get a very good feel for what this sounds like, you want to hit uh, the sync start and then intro and hold a chord down on the keyboard. You've got to hold a chord. So assuming I wanted to try out this style on C minor, I would come over here and I would hold a C minor and that would play the intro. This is the intro for this style. Okay. So it's on B. If I wanted to go to C, I just press C. A little fill and then it's into C.
how to get a style started and how to move between A, B, C, and D. If you want to break, just hit this, and then the music will break. So let's hit the break. All right, so I hope all of this is making sense. If you have questions, you can always put them in the comments below. If you're enjoying the video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. It helps the algorithm, helps people find this content, okay? All right. Let's hit the end in. Now, what I like about this compared to my other keyboard is these styles have a lot of intentionality behind them. My motif is great. I like it, but it doesn't give me smooth transitions between the different patterns for each style. Let me give you an example. Let's go to standards and jazz, right? And then I'm going to the bebop. Let's go, the bebop is my favorite. Let's go to bebop and let's hit sync, start, and intro. Now, I'm going to demo the bebop style. Uh, let's use the key of G minor, for example. Now listen to the intricate, the intricate piano work and the intricate intro and see how it transitions from intro into A, main variation A. And then when I hit B, notice how it transitions to B, C, and D gives you that fill, so it's almost as though you're playing with a real band. That's one of the, the strong points of this keyboard. Let's check this out. Now we're on, we're on the A pattern, we're on A. I could play. Let's go to B. Now we're on B, and we'll walk in. Let's go back to A, watch this. You can hear that change, and it's quite quick, but you can hear it's gone from the cymbals to the hi-hat. Now let's go to C. Nice little fill and ushers you into C, really nice. Now watch D, check D out. Nice transition, really clean. Now check the ending. Very clean, intentional, pristine and professional. This is all the stuff I like about this keyboard. Now, I'll just go a little bit further and demonstrate how you can get additional EQ on the instrument. Now bear with me because the camera is gonna move around a little bit. It's the best way I can do this. So I'm going to uh, start off with Something more from the R&B uh, family, because those have those highs. So let's go to something along the lines of classic hip hop on the key of C minor. Let's do that. And then I'm going to EQ it. You're going to see me EQ it um, as we go along. So let's do an intro C minor. <laughs> Okay, stop. 
All right, I've got to do this a little bit differently. So bear with me. I want to make sure I'm hearing everything nice so I know the EQ is actually working. All right, so let's uh, start that intro again. Here we go. Okay. Now you can hear everything that's going on. I am going to begin working on the EQ. And to do that, we're going to shift over to this camera. Okay. Now, to begin working on the EQ, you want to hit mixer slash EQ. And that goes to this screen. Over here, you have got filter effect EQ and master EQ. You gotta hit this tab button to go over to EQ and ultimately master EQ. So in master EQ, we have three layers, but the layers I'm really after are frequency and gain. So I'm gonna I'm going to turn these up by using these to toggle between the highs, the mids, and the lows, highs, mids, and lows. And I'm going to roll off some of the frequencies, okay? So let me turn up the music and you can hear the effect of what I'm about to do. Okay, let's turn those highs. You hear those highs? Roll them all the way down using this, all the way up. And let's use this to go up, and then you can roll them up or down. Hear that? See the difference? You hear that? Going to the mids. Mids all the way down or up. You hear that? That's a real bottom end. Hear that? So you got the highs, the mids, and the lower. So you got five bands to play with. So. What you're hearing is just the styles. You can also EQ or put some effects on the actual instrument. So let's choose one of the synth. Let's try. Something with some attack. Okay, we'll try oxygen. Let's turn the volume up. So with oxygen, I'm gonna pack a whole lot of reverb on this, but I wanna show you how to get there. Again, 
you want to make sure you've hit mixer EQ and just toggle with these to the effects. Okay, so check this out. Hear that? A little bit of reverb, but not that much. So I'm going to toggle over to the top where I have that reverb and just listen to the difference. I'm gonna turn it up. Let's turn the music up too. I'm gonna turn it way up now. Hear the difference. Hear that? And it's all it's all from this mixer EQ. So if you're interested in getting more EQ, more reverb and stuff, the magic happens here. You gotta spend time playing with it, experimenting with it, and seeing um, how you're able to leverage it. Okay. All right, so let's turn it up. Change the camera. And check out the difference. All the way down now. Nothing. Hear how plain it sounds. I can actually get rid of the delay as well. If I wanted to. No delay. So let me turn off the drums just to demo this. So again, check out the difference in the sound. Plain. Now with a bit of reverb, just a little bit. A whole lot of reverb. And a whole lot of delay. Less delay. Okay, and in these tabs up here, you can also go in between the highs and the low for the sound you're using. And this could get a little bit complicated, so my recommendation would be to, in baby steps, play around with mixer EQ see the effect that it has on these sounds and check out the, the effect it has on the styles as well. Okay, so back to where we were. different that sound So far, we've taken a look at some sounds, some styles, how to get those effects. Um, I'll also say that it's got a very awesome sequencer. I've sequenced one or two tracks on this, and let's go to select. 
Let's see, let's uh, go to user. And let me see if I can find the sequence that I have programmed here. This took quite a lot of effort to do. I programmed Superstition by Stevie Wonder. Let's see if I can play a bit of it for you. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> Everything you heard was sequenced using this functionality for 16 tracks. So I hope this demo has illustrated to you the possibilities of this pretty awesome keyboard. I remember being at Guitar Center um, middle of last year and seeing it and I put on one of the styles and I, I was just playing around and I'm like, my goodness, this sounds like I'm actually playing with a real band. And that's what caused me to trade in one of my chords, my SP200, and a bunch of other things. And I said, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick this up. Um, I ended up trading in a bunch of things. I picked this up for about $100 after I traded in a bunch of things in a gift card. So it really didn't cost me that much. Um, if you look at the value that this has brought to my uh, musical assortment, 
you know, the instruments I have, I would say it's worth probably five or six times more than the price, more than the 800. I have a keyboard over here. You don't really see it, but I have another keyboard under here, which is my motif. My motif has been covered up for the past <laughs> the past number of weeks because I haven't had, to be quite honest, I haven't had much cause to turn my motif on. It's been covered up, as you can see here. And uh, that's my motif XF8. I'm hiding under there. That's my XF8. That's my Ensonic uh, TS12. And the picture has gone uh, a little bit little bit upset so let me change the camera and then we'll close this out for the night I think my camera's trying to tell me I need to I need to pack it in <laughs> all right well there's my like I said my motif um, XF8 which um, I have not used in in a while because this has been holding up pretty well there's my TS12 I also have a cog which I haven't turned on in a while this has really done a good job of giving me enough uh, material to um, put up on, on the channel. Um, for those of you who love the motif, it will be back. Um, but for now, this is doing, it's holding down the fort, so to speak. All right. So I hope that gave you a good idea of what this keyboard can do. Um, $800, but do not be deceived. This is a, a powerhouse. It's all sorts of things. It could drive your dolls. You can play your VSTs from it. It has, like I said, the ability to uh, drive your sound through here via Bluetooth. It has a USB out, which allows you to get the audio from USB directly into a computer if you were using a door. So no need for the goofy old cables and, you know, audio boxes and stuff. You can get the audio directly from here through USB, pretty much that's what I'm doing right now, uh, through OBS, um, so it's not even going through any door. This is just coming straight out and going into OBS, which is what I'm using to record. Um, also, over here, you've got an input where you can plug in a USB, so if you wanted to get sounds out of a USB, to uh, play sounds directly, like WAV files, MP3s, you can actually do that as well. I mean. I haven't even scratched the surface about the craziness of this keyboard. All right, so if, you, if you're looking to get a keyboard at an affordable price and you have the time to, to, to really dig into the manual, because you know some of you haven't seen the manual, while it's not humongous, it, it has a fair amount of, of detail in it. You know, I'm still coming through the manual. There's a lot of great content. <laughs> There's a lot of great content in this manual that I am yet to get to. So this isn't just one of those afterthought kind of keyboards, okay? And I don't work for Yamaha. I'm just giving you my honest opinion. Uh, although Yamaha, you probably owe me after this video. So hit me up. <laughs> All right, my friends. You take care. I hope this helps with your buying process. Send me any questions you have, and don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Bye for now. Hey friends, I want to answer the question, why buy this DGX670 when I've got this, a Motif XF8? Well, let me demo some of the functionality in the accompaniment, especially on the XF8. Check this out. Not bad, huh? Not bad, right? Not bad.
it's cooking, it sounds good. But when you introduce the DGX670 and its crazy fancy intros, I mean, its intros are so ridiculous. They're good. They sound live. Check this out. Check the ending. So when you check out the accompaniment, the intros, the endings, and the fills, if you want a live performance without the backing band, you've got to go with this, my friends. This is sick when it comes to the intros, the endings, and the fills. Let's demo one more style. Just to give you an idea, let's use a rock beat here and uh, let's do contemporary rock. Let's hear what that sounds like. Here we go. Let's do this. Not too bad. Let's change it. Not bad. Okay, you get the idea. Not bad, not a bad sound. But when you get to the DGX and you turn up its ridiculous rock sound, it's got Brit rock pop, it's got standard rock, you've got so many choices. But let's check out a few. Let's just check out the Brit rock pop. Check this out. And I'm going to play the intro as usual. Here it goes. So it's a little bit mild. Not as crazy. But still, you hear that full, cleaner, narrower, at least in the higher register, sound while still giving a good body at the bottom. Let's try another one. Let's try the standard rock. Here's an intro to that. You see the intros, they add so much flavor to the whole thing, especially when you're performing live without a band. Check this out.
it's got these hits based on the pressure that you hit. It gives you a crash or a different type of drum sound like this. Check this out. See that? bad at all but I still haven't gone to rock as heavy <laughs> I haven't gone to rock as heavy as what I demoed on here but uh, trust me it is here let's try the power rock sound here we go let's try power rock here we go not bad Well, I hope that gave you an idea of what this can do and what this can do. This has got sounds that are not as heavy or I would say even as great as this, even though I would say it's about 80% good compared to this. 80%, I'd give that, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give this a 10 for the sounds. I'd give this an 8. But in terms of the accompaniment, which is pretty much why I bought it. This has got to be a 10. I'd give this about a six, you know, because it, it doesn't bring that whole sound together full circle like this one does. You know, this has got some great accompaniment, but it's, 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 not, as, it's not as powerful as this. When it comes down to the sounds, let's go to the electric piano. I want to, I want to show you the electric piano sounds here. So here's some electric pianos on this. Here's another one, the 80s layer. Got a really nice full body compared to that one. That one has good sounds, but they are not as weighty and as beefy as this. That's the ballad stack. Here's a vintage 74. So it's panning, you can't hear the full thing, unfortunately, because it's panning. Those are nice, early 70s. Soft case. So you can hear it's got a lot more weight at the bottom. Some nice pianos. That's another good one. 
That's the sweetness. And then it's got some really nice early sounding, like the 70s. Now let's take a look at this as far as its piano sounds. It's got some good sounds too, though I wouldn't count them as, you know, as heavy as this. You know, you might have an opinion that's different from mine, so I would advise you to check out both. Not bad. Sounds clean, right? It sounds clean, and it, it's got it's got its own body in its own right. But this is kind of on a heavier, sharper, on the lower register, in my opinion. Now that's kind of lightweight, at least for now. This is a nice one, if only it was in stereo. But you can't hear it in stereo on this demo. It's nice nonetheless. I like this one, it's a suitcase. So um, that's pretty much it as far as the electric pianos on this are concerned. It's got some really nice sounds, but again, what makes me like this one is the accompaniment. So I'm going to show off the accompaniment one more time. I can't help it. <laughs> I've got to show you this. I've got to show you these beats uh, in the dance R&B section of it, because this has nothing that compares to this. I have to be honest. It's got everything from disco, so let's play some disco here. Disco. Another disco. And you just hear those songs. So this is like the, that song, Rock the Bow, right? You know, it, you, you just hear sounds from way back. It's like they took some of those old songs and they actually programmed those, these beats to remind you of those. There's a number of them. A lot of Stevie Wonder songs, you just hear them when you hear some of these beats uh, and many more. Let's check this out. Out the fails. Intuitive as well. Movie disco. The 
I got to give it to Yamaha. This is is really really awesome. Okay, I don't know how many times I've said that already. Let's check out some classic hip hop. I love the classic hip hop. Check this out. Here's an intro. Intro. Check this intro out. Whoops. Check the intro out. <laughs> one or two more for my church peeps we got worship slow and worship medium which keyboard have you seen that has worship on it crazy isn't it hear those voices in the background Worship slow. You gotta love those voices, the ahs and all that stuff. And here is worship medium. Worship medium. I'm sorry you can't get a better view. Let's tilt it a little bit. Worship medium. Here we go with a quick intro. Worship medium. F major seventh. <laughs>
right, my friends, I hope that gave you an idea of why I bought this keyboard for those who are asking. Hope it gave you an idea about the differences. Really great when it comes to the accompaniment. The sounds, I give it about eight out of 10. This, the sounds, really awesome. However, when it comes to bringing it all together in the accompaniment, doesn't quite do it for me. Maybe you've got a different opinion. All right, thank you, bye for now. Welcome my friends. Today I'm going to give you an end-to-end -end demonstration of the DGX670 standards and jazz rhythms in the accompaniment section. So we're going to take a look at the rhythms. I'm going to be on the key of A minor for the most part. Let's jump into it.
listening to a couple of jazz beats there you were listening first of all to acoustic jazz and then instrumental jazz and now we're going into jazz guitar club let's do that on a major key this time and we'll be on the key of c major let's go into the intro <laughs> into the intro
there, 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 there. and moving move into, into, into a second, a second. Big, bang. big Bang. Here we go, here we go.
hello there. Very quick message for our friend Glenn, who asked about how to generate this suspense sound. Well, right off the bat, Glenn, I use the strings choir setting. So you go to your sounds and you get that strings and choir. And then it goes here and then you've got concert strings right off the bat. And this is a great one for you to use to get that really suspense kind of sound. And I just use a simple trick of building on the minor. So for example, on A minor, I then take it from the A to the minor third of A, which is C, but I play the minor of that. And I just keep building on the minor thirds as you go up. So it's A minor, C minor, E flat minor, F sharp minor, back to A minor. It's like a diminished kind of thing. So, you know. Like... On and on like that. Now, one of the settings that I like to use on this keyboard or my mixer is a lot of reverb, a lot of reverb. So if you take a look closely, you've got the mixer EQ over here, right? Press mixer EQ and you want to go to the tab buttons and go to effect and just toggle, use the buttons to go in between and kind of lift up the reverb so that you've got some real roomy reverb in that and all the way up there as well so these three what i'm doing is really elevating the reverb somehow and you can play around with those until you are comfortable with what you're getting so that's a lot of reverb now so when I'm playing this effect, when I'm playing this sound, it is going to be very ominous. Something else you could do to get real suspended sounds is use clusters like this and any note will do to be honest i also use a lot of ninth so in this example over here you can see I'm holding down a G sharp and a B flat. I like using a lot of ninth and then the fifth. So take any note, add a fifth, add a ninth. And just move it around like this. And then hold any cluster up here, any cluster whatsoever of three whole tone notes like that and add the 11th it usually goes <laughs> or just stick to minor so I've shown you one instrument but they're all in that string choir family right here's gospel voices on C minor And that's okay, but it definitely needs some more reverb. So what I showed you in the beginning, just throw a bunch of reverb on there. And then you got something roomier and. If you get what I mean, okay? And um, anything in this family of Anything in this family of voices is going to be good. Anything in the strings and choir, right? The orchestral harp. 
I mean, that, you, you never go wrong with that. All right. And then Gothic Vox. I mean, just, just the, the effect alone is enough to get you into that suspended state. Just go back to the stacking of minors. On and on. That's pretty much it, uh, Glenn, to be honest. It's, it's all in that family of stuff. Uh, mellow harp. Uh, here's this orchestra. If you really wanted to have a party with this, you could record, um, like this one is called Orchestra Tutti. Let's see, rather funny name. And then we've got Orchestra Hit. So this Orchestra Tutti, whatever that means, <laughs> it's a bit of a funny name, um, you could get a lot of mileage out of it, you know. Let me give you a very quick demonstration. <laughs> could get a lot of mileage out of that one. Hits and stuff. All right. The last thing I want to show you is the entertainment section in the styles, right? Over here. And we got sci-fi march, tap dance, swing, Broadway ballad, cartoon ballad, all sorts of crazy, really interesting styles for TV, uh, for suspense. Let's do the sci-fi march first. I'll just demo that real quick on G minor. Not bad, so that's Sci-Fi March. There's one other that I'm looking for. Uh, the Secret Service, yes. This one called Secret Service is actually 
a pretty cool one for suspense. So we're going to go on C minor, and we're going to do an intro, and here we go. And you can find a bunch more of them. A 70s TV theme. You can find other interesting ones. You just experiment all in there, you'll find them. Glenn, I hope that gave you some ideas. Thanks for the question, and all the very best. Latin Bats on the DGX. Check this out. <laughs>
was that was Brazilian, Brazilian boss. Cool, cool boss. Now. Now. now, cool boss. Cool boss. Check this out. Check this out.
final, final one. 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 What's an over? over.
Hello, my friends. Welcome again to another episode on the DGX670. Today, I'll be demoing the guitars on this keyboard. <laughs> That's the steel guitar. Let's play the nylon string, the nylon guitar now. Let's go to the concert guitar now. Okay, this is the folk guitar harmony. Next one is the flamenco guitar. Next one is clean solid. The next one is Guitar Hero, and for Guitar Hero, we probably need a solid beat behind it for reasons such as proof of distortion. So let's go pretty heavy into something along the lines of rock. And here is Guitar Hero. Thank <laughs> you. 
self-indulgent I do confess I like rock quite a bit all right let's move on to the next guitar this is rock legend uh, distortion caution again so for this one I will change the beat slightly and we'll do something along the lines of gospel sisters on C minor not as aggressive <laughs>
distortion, caution. Now we're moving into semi-acoustic, not as aggressive, thank goodness. <laughs> All right, here we go, semi-acoustic. This is jazz clean guitar. That's the first page. Now the second page jumps from the jazz guitar clean to electric bass. I gotta demo this with a beat so you know how bad it is. And uh, I'll choose something along the lines of the, more of the current stuff. New R&B, let's try that. Okay, here we go. Not bad. Okay, that's the electric bass. Let's go to pick dino bass. Now this is slap bass. Let's try that with a different beat. Let's try classic hip hop. That's slap bass. Next is fretless. No need for a beat on this one.
really nice with a little bit more reverb. And there's a way you can actually do this. You can go over to the mixer EQ over here and you can hit up here where you've got tab and go to effect and you could, I don't know if you can see any of what I'm doing. Let me see if I can turn the light down. Okay. I think that's better. Okay. So these buttons over here, this is the reverb panel and it's on real bright hall. If I take it all the way up, especially the middle one, hear that? It can increase the reverb. And there are different parameters, but the summary is you can get a pretty decent fretless bass reverb sound when you amp up the reverb. So you got something like this. You can mess around with those reverb controls for whatever you want, whichever instrument you want. All right. Now this is acoustic bass. Acoustic bass. So for this, I'd like to demo this with the acoustic Actually, let's see if we can do this with a bebop, the bebop ry rhythm. Got bebop here and... That's the acoustic, quite a nice bass to play with. All right, moving on, we've got low bass here. It's just called low bass, really low. Huh. Dark bass. All right, we 
have moon bass. Kick bass. It's all on the lower register. <laughs> Probably would help if I move the camera over a little bit. Club bass. Okay. And then we're moving over to the next page, and this has got vintage amp guitar. <laughs> Warm solid. Don't you love that slide effect? Oh my goodness, I love that. If you play guitar, you love that sound. By the way, I'm using my foot pedal to do a lot of the sustains, so... Clean electric. electric. Jazz guitar smooth. Well, we probably should look for an excuse to play some jazz here. Let's do jazz club on the key of G minor. Uh, here we go. and the guitar that I just played was the Jazz Guitar Smooth, SW. Now we've got another troublemaker here, Feedbacker, which I will not indulge myself in much. <laughs> Heavy rock guitar. Crunch guitar. Half drive. Pedal steel. Let's play something.
Okay, any excuse to have a little bit of fun. Let's go back. And next page is Vintage Round. Next one is Vintage Pick. Next one is Vintage Flat. Next one is Vintage Mute. Next one is Vintage Pick Mute. All right, next one is Fat Pulse. Next one is Wazo Soul. Next one is Deep Point. Next one is Tight Bass. And you pick up the pieces.
welcome, welcome. Today we're taking a look at the DGX 670 keyboard. I got this keyboard for under $800. I traded in a lot of stuff and I had a gift card and I spent roughly a hundred bucks when all was said and done. This is the best value for a keyboard that I've ever gotten in like ever. <laughs> so I'm going to show you today some of the sounds from this awesome keyboard and to make it as realistic as possible so that you get the true feel of these instruments. I have zeroed the EQ, so it's zero EQ. Um, I'm not doing any sound adjustment, okay? This is just plain what you see is what you hear kind of thing. So we're going to start off just going through the pianos. So I'm going to hit that, and we're going to start off with the CFX Grand. And I'm just going to call out each one as we go through so that you see that there's no trickery, right? What you see is what you hear. And I'm just going to play some of these sounds so that you know what to expect. I know some of you uh, want to get this keyboard, and you just want to know a little bit more about it. And I'm hoping that when you hear me play it, it'll show you what it's capable of, all right? So let's go ahead and start off with the piano. This is a CFX Grand. Grand. Okay, I'm going to very quickly go over a few more. So let's come over here so that you can see instances when I may use the pitch bend. I want you to really see what's going on every step of the way. Okay, so let's uh, play the Pop Grand. Here's the Pop Grand, just very briefly. <laughs> This is a studio grand. This is the octave piano. Octave Piano 1. This is Octave Piano 2. A bit of on the lower side. Okay, let's go to Bright Piano. Thank you. 
This is rock piano. piano. Cocktail piano. sound there and from the harpist chord we move on to the suitcase EP <laughs> it's got this really nice bell tone vintage EP Tine, typical Tine sound. Now this is panned left and right, so you're not getting the full effect of the pan in, unfortunately, because this is just in mono, if you get what I mean. But it's got really nice sound when you're weighing, you know, real left and right uh, headset. Not from this recording, but just directly into the board, because this is going straight into the camera, and it's uh, mono, unfortunately. Okay, next one is electric piano. Same thing, it's got a pan, so you can hear it kind of going in and out, but it gives an idea of what it's like. Tremolo suitcase, now you hear the full effect of this one. Next one is a MIDI grand. MIDI grand pad is next. Next one 
next one is Midi Grand Sin. <laughs> This is the piano orchestra. My favorites here, the DX Suite. Let's start with that. DX Ballad. DX Dynamic. DX Ballad Bells. This one's DX Midnight. CP80. I am using a pedal for a lot of the sustain because if I wasn't it'll just be like but when I use the pedal sustains obviously so I mean the pedal becomes absolutely vital to be able to get that level of sustain okay clavy bright For some of these sounds, you almost need to hear them against a beat backdrop. So if I was really going to demo this, I would want some sort of beat and go like this. <laughs> Not like that. Another clavy wah clavy. Okay, you get the deal. So, really nice sound to go with some cool funk drums. Okay, next is the warm grand. Piano 
sound in one. This is a grand harpy chord. Harpy coupler. Dream. DX Sparkle. CEP Hear that the percussive sound the harder you hit it so normally some pressure Stage EP. Here's Ballad Stack. Chorus Bell. Funk EP. Let's put some accompaniment in it. So what I'm going to do is split it so that I've got the funk EP up there and on the bass down here, I'm going to use a totally different sound. That's one of the cool things about this keyboard. You can split it into bass and then keys up here. See that?
dramatic all right so let's go back to the funky p and now we're going to jazz chorus <laughs> all right and i think we covered every single piano sound on the dgx 670 just one by one quite a number of sounds. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thank you. Welcome to the comprehensive video on using the accompaniment on the DGX670. It's a brilliant keyboard, but the fingering functionality sometimes could throw you for loop, making you extremely frustrated. Let's get started by turning the keyboard on. Turn the keyboard on and here is the logo, that Yamaha logo. We're going to give it some time to boot up here. Now that it's on, we go straight to the left panel. Now, there are a few things that you may need to do for this to work perfectly, but if all works well, you should be able to hit start and hear a B. And you should be able to select the accompaniment light by just pressing accompaniment. And all you do is play whatever chord you want, like this. And down here. But what's happening? Something funky is going on, right? So it's not quite getting what I want. And the reason is this, you got to find the fingering functionality that works best for you. And the way to do that is to go to the menu button and click on enter because now you are in split point slash chord fingering. And this is where you could spend a lot of time just trying to get the right fingering function that works for you. Hit enter and it takes you in here, right? There are two things that may be wrong with your fingering mode, right? If you look over here, you've got a couple of options. You see these options here? Let's take a close look. There is the chord detection area and the manual base. And depending on how you move these buttons up or down, if you have manual base on and chord detection area upper, this is what happens. So let's do that again. Let's hit the beat. And when we play down here, nothing happens. We just hear a bass. So that could be what is happening with yours. And up here, when you hit a chord, the chords work on this higher register. And that has its place, you know. You know, you could chain the chords up here and so on and so forth. But if that is not what you want, you definitely want this to be on off for manual bass and lower for chord detection area. So that's the first thing I would recommend. The second thing I would recommend is the split point over here. You gotta get the split point right. And what does split point mean? Here we have B1. We go over here, this is the B1. Beyond the B1, you will begin to hear the piano when you play on top. But with B1 selected for left and right, that means when we have this on, hear that? So we've got this, but it's... Okay, it seems as though beyond the B, we have 
the piano registering up here. So this sets all the fingering functionality from here, B1, and down. Now, another part of the puzzle is actually getting the chords that you play down there to actually work. So there's one more piece of the puzzle, and to get there, you need to use these tab buttons at the top. And if you hit this tab button, it goes over here. So it's a bit of trial and error for you to find out what works for you. Is it AI full keyboard or is it smart chord? Maybe smart chord works for you or maybe AI full keyboard, but let's check out the differences, okay? So with smart chord selected, let's hit start. And I'm just gonna play a chord all the way down here. Still not giving me exactly what I want. It's still got some kind of weird stuff going on. So now I'm going to try the AI full keyboard, see if that helps. And while that's not bad, it's still not giving me what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna try the AI fingered option. You can see all these options here. Just toggle using the button. So let's try the AI fingered option. Let's see how that works. Almost. So not bad, but I'm hearing some interference and that interference seems to be coming from the left part on off. If I take that off and I try again, I might get better results. Let's try that. All right, and hit this to fill in. Much better. Okay, let's end it. Hit the end, end in. All right, so a few things we were able to find out. AI fingered works well when you know your four note chords and you're able to manipulate. But don't forget, when you come out to this other tab here and you get into this screen, you gotta make sure that you got manual bass off and the chord detection area. For me, over here I need to increase my chord detection area just a little bit because I was playing a few notes. I didn't, I didn't like the effect of playing those notes. So I'm going to, I'm going to go up a little bit to C2, maybe E2. Okay. So now I've got it as I want it and go into the tab. We're just going to make sure that AI fingered, you're going to make sure AI fingered is selected and just exit, okay? And exit again. And now it's back here and to select the beat you want, let's go to some dance and R&B. And I'm gonna use the, uh, let's see, classic hip hop is one of my favorites. I'm gonna use classic hip hop as an example. So with everything armed, sync start, intro, 
and this is going to be on C minor. So let me set this up so that you can actually see what's going on. And uh, apologies for all the squeaky sounds that you'll be hearing of this tripod. It's a little bit squeaky. All right, so with all that selected, I'm going to play the C minor chord to start this off. Here we go. So that's the intro. get the idea. But don't forget to change to the voice you want. So if you want some electric piano or something else, which is what I like for this track, just change. Hit enter, you're in, and play any chord you want and it should conform. doing what I want. And that's how it works. It's that simple. So there's a few steps that you need to make sure you uh, follow. Let's go back into the beat. I'm going to show you the last stage of fingering control on the DGX 670, which is going in and out of the different sounds in the accompaniment. So let's choose so um, let's choose Jazz Guitar Club and let's get moving with that and uh, let's use uh, A major 7th. Let's do sync start and intro. Here we go. Get a guitar. Okay, here we go. Assuming I wanted to take any of these sounds off, the way you do it, you go to the channel on off button right here, and that takes you to this screen, and using the lower buttons, you can turn them off one by one, like just like that. See that? All I have is the drums, just the drums. See that? It's a lot of control for this instrument. Let's put the bass in. Just the same bass plane. Now we can begin 
adding them in one by one. Let's put in the chords, guitar chords, I guess. Uh, here, there we go. Let's put the next rhythm in and the next set of chords. So those are the piano chords, just piano. Could be really helpful to have some control over that once in a while. And then back to the guitar chords. Check that out, really crazy and you can change the beat. Just gives you a, a lot more options. See that? It's the lower ones. That's it. All right, let's wrap this up. happened there my split point is not that far up if I want my split point to be that far up or if I want it to be that far up if I want my split point to be that far up then I've got to go in here to menu split point that tab and then I got to make this a G you see that Right now it's an E, you see that? But if I want it to be higher up, I'm gonna have to take this up to a G, a G2, or a G sharp at least. See, on A flat. So now, I should be able to play my chords higher up here. Let's try that. There you go, see that? So yeah, that's where it stops. So that's the G2. So I, I can play my chords all the way up here, anywhere along here, which is helpful. But as far as the higher octaves for the solo, I can play them here. down two octaves and you can keep just walking down like that because it goes all the way to the end now see that Let's end it. So my friends, you've got a very good idea of how to set up your finger in mode now. You turn the thing on, you go to menu, you hit enter to get into that split point chord fingering. Make sure it's set to off and lower, and then use the tabs to move over to AI fingered, and then go back and make sure that your split function is where you want it to be. But again, it really depends on the beat that you've activated. So for this, I don't have any upper register stuff playing where I don't want it, it's all here. because I chose one more reminder, I know, 
One more reminder, let's hit enter. I chose A flat two, see that? And A flat two is this right here. That's A flat two, not this. This is like A flat zero, because for some reason it reads this as A flat two. So when I'm on my accompaniment, it stops at A flat two, and from A, it begins. All right, my friends, I hope this helped you. Let me know if you've still got any questions. Bye for now. Welcome back, my friends, to part two of the DGX 670. We've been checking out some of the sounds. The last time I showed you all the piano sounds in this category, just to make it absolutely crystal clear, we went over this last time, and today, I'm not sure what we're gonna go over. Hmm, what would you like? Well, it's too bad I can't hear you exactly right now. But I'm going to take a stab at something fun, right? Why don't we go over the styles? I'm gonna call out the styles, and I'm just gonna take one silo of styles and check them all out. And I know the styles that a lot of you are interested in is in the more current stuff. So we're going into the dance and R&B. Dance, dance, you know what I mean. But we're going to that silo and we're gonna start with Frankly Soul. And I'm gonna start off with the intro. I'm gonna use the accompaniment feature so that you get the true feel of everything under this style category. So let's start off with a C minor and it's Frankly Soul. Let's go. Quite dramatic drums there. Let's start again, and this time I'll give you the melodic accompaniment down here on C minor. Let's go. Let's go to Funky Shuffle, and we're going on to the key of D minor. Let's go. Okay, and a jazz rotary organ at the top. Here we go. to the next one here and that is cool funk here is cool funk on the key of a minor i'm gonna put some bright trumpet up top here here you go we're gonna change the trumpet now 
going to big band trumpet. Pad and B now. Trumpet four. for 800 bucks or less depending on where you bought it this is a really good buy now let's go on to the worship slow mode this is on G minor and we're gonna hit it with a sweet trombone here we go <laughs> hear those voices voices are really nice now let's change to C now. going into worship medium and let's go straight into the intro and this is going to be on a major D major <laughs> Thank you. 
the next one the next one we're gonna do not so quick <laughs> Detroit pop and we're going to the key of a minor to the key of F. We're going to start off with the intro and this is Detroit Pop 2. <laughs> This jam is called Motor City, and we're going to do this on E minor, and let's check it out. And we're going to use a voice up here, just a concert strings. <laughs> styles and check this one out it's soul and we're just going to do this on C major let's go into the intro <laughs>
ending. Let's see what else is here. We've got lovely shuffle. Let's do that on C sharp minor. And let's put in the intro. that on a different key it'll actually sound more like isn't she lovely by stevie wonder so let's do that intro let's do that on an f major now check out the intro it'll remind you more of that song or d minor let's do that again one more time Definitely inspired by Stevie there. All right, we got just, uh, I think, a couple more from what I'm seeing. Yeah, we've gone through. Oh, we haven't gone through a few that were earlier on here. So let's just do a few more of these uh, current ones. Let's do the classic hip hop. Classic hip hop coming up. Here we go. <laughs> trouble by playing the exact song. <laughs> Uh, one more from the uh, new R&B. Let's do that one and we'll do this on C minor. Here we go. One of my favorites. Yeah. A lead at the top. Let's go to pad and D. Well, 
that's it for now, my friends. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share. I hope this gave you an idea of how crazy this keyboard is. For under $800, it packs a punch. I tell you, if you're thinking of getting it, you will not regret it. Great buy. See you in the next video. This, this is a journey, 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 journey. Into, into sound. sound. Yamaha. Yamaha. DGX. DGX. Yamaha. We're moving on to our next beat. It's called Global IDJs. Wow. Well, well, well. Seems as though I'm about to lose power, so this might be our final song for the night. Are you ready? Here we go. <laughs> Oh,
last song. Last song for the night, my friends. See you later. Hello. Thank you for checking out this mini concert. All the sounds that you're about to hear are from the DGX 670 keyboard. I have adjusted some of the EQ and the reverb, but all the sounds are directly from the keyboard. Happy listening.
Thank you for staying this far. Hope you had fun. Hope you got some ideas. Okay.
Bye for now. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share, please. Hello friends, still demoing the DGX for you, and today I'm going to show you some of the sax sounds. I didn't do the soprano sax enough justice when I showed it to you the other day, and this is what it sounds like. So I've added a bit of reverb, tweaked it up a bit, done a little bit of pan magic, and I'm just going to play um, just some improvisational stuff on top of it, just so you get the feel that it's actually not a bad sax, okay? It doesn't sound bad. So let me go ahead and I'll demo that for you, okay? Here we go.
All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope it shows you the saxophones are not that bad. You just need to tweak them a bit and save your settings. Bye for now. Wishing you a happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. You have a great day. Close like this.
happy birthday. Hey, welcome DGX family. I hope you're doing well. Those of you who have the keyboard or are thinking of the keyboard and you asked the question, will it be limited? Well, I don't think so because it's got this really cool USB functionality. And even though I don't have killer trap beats on this keyboard, I could always import my killer trap beat. Take this for example. I'm going to show you the power of the DGX USB audio. Check this out. Yeah, 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 yeah. DGX, six seven eight seven eight. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Hustle, hustle, No need to vex. You'll be impressed. Uh oh, uh -oh. forget the rest. DGX. You're crazy. You make everyone so crazy. So crazy. Yeah, yeah. DGX is the best. Oh dear. oh dear, Cog ain't gonna like that, Roland ain't gonna like that.
no stress. No stress. My friends, well, there you have it. The DGX 670, it's the best as far as the price point, as far as everything else. If you want a keyboard that will impress you, I want to impress upon you to get the DGX. Okay, I own several keyboards, grand piano, but I tell you, this holds its own.
Hello, my friends. I'm going to show you today how to record your audio directly out from your DGX 670 into your digital audio workstation. And you can see I have my digital audio workstation, which is very similar to lots of the other ones. I have that open up on the screen. And I'm just going to start off by playing a drum loop and then layer in on top. OK, so there are many ways you can leverage the power of the door. You could, if you have a library of sounds, use sounds that you already have, like loops. So I'm going to find some random loop in here to use. Some good drums. So that's one of my favorites, a solid one. I think I've used that for track. I've actually released. So I'm just going to drag this onto the timeline. And I'm going to say, yeah, go to 87 beats per minute, because that's the tempo, as you can see over there. All right. Then with that set, let's drag it up. I'm going to put it right next to the keyboard. So let's hide that. Let's see. So that's still far up. Let's do it again. Two and go. And back. So I'm going to loop all that. Okay, so this needs to be right on the time. Let's see if we got it eventually. So that's a bit rushed. Get in. I think we got it locked now. So that's a general idea. Let's go ahead, duplicate. And this is going to be our piano track now. So let's go ahead and record this and count it in. Okay. So that's uh, that chord is in error. I got to make it a, a major or seventh B flat seventh. Okay, back to zero. So when the drums weren't playing in the background, my bass was off a little bit. You can probably hear it not being totally synced in, but that's okay. 
we're going to do a little bit of pan magic here. So just listen. I'm going to try panning the instrument uh, keys a little bit. Check this out. <laughs> So you can hear the electric piano is more in the right now than the left. Let's put a little bit of it in the left. Okay, with that done, let's go ahead, duplicate, and let's put in some strings, some palatable strings. So here we go, and we are going to pan it a little bit to the left. Quite aggressive, those strings. I think I prefer the studio. Okay. Let's try it out, see what happens. back. Generally, once you've got a good drum track locked in, everything else can be built around. Now, one of the things that I typically do when I have a troublesome instrument like this, I could punch in so there's somewhere the chords go weird. So I could do it from 9, I could actually do the whole 9 to 16. So I could do all that stuff again. So just get rid of that. Take the cursor to 9, make sure the track is active, track 6, and I'll start with that. That should do it. Okay. That should, that should do. Let's unmute, let's check it out. So that's gone out of sync again. So you gotta be real patient when you're working with this, okay? There are other ways that you could get everything to sync as you're working it, but I don't have that option right now. And that's it.
we've got some good piano, some strings and bass. The next thing I'm going to put on this, maybe some vocals and horns. So let's go for some of these horns. And, okay, here we go. Okay, that kind of went pear-shaped. So let's listen to it from the beginning. So, this is where the fun begins. So... Okay, let's try an idea right over here. Dreadful chord. Let's try and get that one in. Oh. Something on the softer end. Okay. I think we got it. Let's listen. Well, you get the idea of how that works. Let's get rid of all this. That's all audio that's not needed. I'm going to right click and delete all those lanes. We don't need them. Delete empty lanes. We got so many empty lanes. So let's delete. Here we go. So now you can see what I've been doing all along. I've been coming in here and I've been modifying 
the effect. So right now, we've got the Waves Harmony Stereo. Click on that, and you can see we've got different keys, but I'm not on C major, I am on F pentatonic minor. So I'm going to choose minor pentatonic from here. trying to get the key. So, so it needs to be a minor pentatonic. So I need to generate notes in that family. Can you hear the notes? Can you hear the notes? That's not all you need to choose the chordal structure and the harmony. And you can hear my voice. My real voice is on the left. Now it's all the way on the right. Huh. And up. And now it's hidden somewhere. That's another voice. And you can see. So now you can see how it works. When I activate the plugin, the voices come alive. But now it's normal. Now it's normal. Now it's special. And so on. So I'm going to leave this. So you get an idea of what this does. I'm going to do one more take. Okay, well, that's as much fun as we'll have for now, my friends. Let's get back to normal. Okay. All right. So, my computer is complaining right now. It's doing video, it's doing audio, it's doing a lot. 
and it's come to the point where I'm going to stop the recording because I think you've gotten the gist. You can use the sounds from your DGX along with your DAW. You can blend them to get some really great output. And at the end of the day, I will mix this down and hopefully be able to put um, some final track so you get an idea of how it pans out. Okay? So thank you very much for joining and I'll see you in another video soon. Bye for now. Hello my friends, I'm going to answer a question from our subscriber Robert about the EQ functionality and some of the effect functionality. The question is a very simple one but it's taken a while for me to get to it and to do a little bit of research in it. So what I've realized is on this keyboard you have some really cool effects like reverb and chorus and compressor but the thing is when you use these effects and you turn off the keyboard they all vanish, they kind of go away. So Robert's question was is there any way of saving these awesome effects that you might spend so much time crafting uh, onto the keyboard so that when you turn it back on, all those sounds are already there. So I want to demo this very quickly to show you that it is possible. And in my example, I will play a variation of the CFX Grand. So that's the plain Grand. But when I hit my memory bank, and it's red and active. So the effect has been retained. You can hear all that abundant reverb and I've also put some compressor on it. So it sounds very different. This is the normal sound. Let's get to the plain. This is the plain one. See? But this is mine. So I'm going to show you how to save all that stuff I did. I saved a lot of the reverb sound effects and the EQ sound effects. And I'm going to go close up to show you how exactly I did it. So the trick to doing this is to use the memory storage here. So I'm going to use a second camera here for you to actually get a close-up of what I'm doing. So all the magic is here, right? Right over here, right over here, right? Once you have tweaked up the sound you want, you simply go to memory and hold down memory and the bank you want to save to. For example, if I want a new bank on 4, because there's nothing on 4, as you can see here. It's, it's, it's grayed out. All these I have things stored, but this I don't. So let's choose an effect, a sound, and an effect. I'm going to make this real big so you can see everything I'm doing. Let's make it much bigger. All right. So now... I am going to let's go to guitar, and here's a concert guitar. So you can hear it, doesn't have a whole lot of reverb. Now let's click on mixer EQ, goes over here, use these tab buttons to go from volume slash pan to effect. So that's two over. Now under effect, you have got the categories of left, and that refers to this left, then main, which is pretty much the keyboard sound that it's set to, and then layer, which is this. But I don't want to mess with left or layer, I only want main 
the main sound in the middle. That's what I want to work on right now. So, that's a guitar. But I want all this reverb on it. Yeah. So I like that. I'm also going to work on the EQ. Again, you can see you've got the style, which is all this stuff over here. You've got left, main, and layer, and then even song. The only thing I want is main. So I'm going to toggle over with these to main. Here's the high. I'll put more high on that. You can hear it's crisp, real crisp. I've gone all the way to the end of the high frequency. But if I turn that down low, it's there, but not as crisp as all the way to the right. Hear that? All right, and then, we have the low, you can go all the way to the left, which is not that much low frequency, all the way to the right with a whole lot of low, oh, that's really low, too much, so somewhere in the middle is okay. And then we've got the master EQ, so we can just toggle over here. If you want to change anything, the master EQ, I'm just going to leave it. We've got a compress effect here, and you've got the compression amount. You can take it down or up, and we've got the texture. And the texture here, you've got options. So let's click on type. You've got natural, compression, rich, punchy, electronic, loud, you choose. So I think I've got mine on rich. And the texture. And then the final output. Now that I'm satisfied with what I've done, Going to hit his exit. And the last piece is to save all your hard work. You want to press memory, hold it down, and hold down the bank you want to save to. So, like now, if I want to save to three on top of what I've already done, I could, but for this illustration, I want to save to bank four. So hold down memory and four, and you see the light is red there, and that means it's registered. If I go to three, it goes straight to the last thing I saved. Now if I go to the guitar, that's all gone because I'm on memory three. But if I go to memory four now, magic activated. So there you have it, my friends. That is how to get your sounds safe to memory so that when you turn it off, be rest assured, it's committed to memory. I'm going to turn it on again, just to demonstrate to you that your sounds are truly saved. Okay. All right. So let's go over here.
Let's play the guitar just raw like that. But when you press four, there are your sound effects. Okay, so I hope that answered the question. I hope you experiment with it and all your hard work of saving uh, stuff and then it vanishing has been solved, hopefully. You know, all your hard work is intact. All right. So again, thank you, Robert, for the question. I hope this answers uh, the question for you and um, happy playing and happy experimenting. Over. Welcome, my friends, to yet another demo of the awesome DGX 670. Today, I'm going to be demoing the strings and the choir. I'll try my best to move very swiftly in and out of them. So let's start off with concert strings. <laughs> That's concert strings. Let's move on to studio strings. Now, you know that with reverb, this could sound a lot better. So I'm going to put a little bit of reverb on there. Okay, that was studio strings. Let's go on to strings pad. 
Let's move on to movie strings. Let's move on to the violins. So we've got the violin.
try the cello. Contrabass. Sounds quite realistic. Next one is the orchestral harp. Always sounds good with a little bit of reverb. Let's crank up the reverb. we've got got some pizzicato strings Next we got tremolo strings. If you don't linger on them, the tremolo effect goes away, except you linger. Okay. 
spiccato strings. <laughs> strings, just called Allegro. <laughs> chamber strings now. I think that's almost it. Just a few more. We have strings F and strings MF and strings P. I, you music aficionados know what what that means. So here we go. Strings F. Strings MF. And 
now strings P. Still got more. Disco strings one. Disco strings two. Staying alive, right? <laughs> strings probably from the Obine synth and then it goes into synth strings Synth strings too. Mellow harp. Orchestra tutti. Tutti tutti. Can someone tell me what that means? <laughs>
we have orchestra hit. Very rocky-ish. And I think that's pretty much it for the strings. That family, at least. Now we've got voices. Gothic Vox. Har Choir. MMH, like mmm. Or mmm. Then we've got humming. The humming sounds more realistic on the lower end. Actually, a few I missed here. So there's a tremolo bowin. So. few other instruments, the hack fret. Dulcimer. Zither one and two. Gospel voices. And I think that's about it, my friends. I hope this gave you an idea of the strings and the choirs. And of course, you know that once you add the secret sauce, the entertainment, rhythms, you get a lot more bang for this buck. So take, for example, let's get something from TV. Sci-Fi March, for example. Let's try that in the key of E minor. <laughs>
put your strings of, of choir on it. Let's try some contrabass too. everything and you could bring them back in one by one That's the last one. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Hello, fellow musicians. Today, we're going to take a look at the Motif XF8. The Yamaha Motif XF8 is well known in industry as a keyboard, but it's not just a keyboard. It's a synthesizer and it's a music workstation that has made a significant impact in the music production industry. The release and design of this beast is rock solid. I've had mine since 2010. That's going on 14 years. It hasn't even got a scratch. It is extremely durable. It features an 88 key balanced hammer effect keyboard, which makes it ideal for both synth playing and serious piano playing. The sound engine is rock solid as well. It boasts a comprehensive sound engine with a massive wave ROM that includes realistic and high quality sounds ranging from acoustic instruments to electronic sounds. When it comes to its sequencing capabilities, it has a 16 track sequencer that's highly regarded for both live and studio applications. And today I'm gonna to be demoing the sequencing capabilities of the motif. In fact, the sounds that you hear in the background are the sounds I'm going to be creating. 
I put together a sequence just using four tracks and it allows for recording and editing both MIDI and audio data. If you look on this channel, you'll find other videos where I have used the Motif XF8 sounds to sequence using the Trident. So when it comes to using the sounds from the Motif, very accessible, you can sequence on other keyboards and pull in those sounds via MIDI. It's still very relevant. Despite newer models and brands emerging, the Yamaha Motif XF8, in my mind, is extremely relevant due to its exceptional sound quality, its robust build and its extensive customization options, and its status as a tried and tested tool among professional musicians. Its integration capabilities with modern technology also ensure that it stays useful in contemporary music production. The sounds, the drum sounds, very today, still today. Some names you might have heard associated with the motif are the late Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder for sure. You've definitely seen Stevie use this thing. And Elton John. And this showcases its versatility and popularity among top artists. Well, let's jump in and let me show you how to sequence on the motif XF8. Welcome, friends. We are working on the Motif XF8, and I'm going to show you, hopefully very quickly, how to sequence on this thing, okay? Now, there are two modes of sequencing on the Motif. You have the mode that we call the Song Mode, and we have the mode called the Pattern. So, I'm going to show you how to do both. Let's first jump into the song mode. Click on song and here you can see on the screen it takes you to the song. And the very first song we have here, let's play it. This is one of the factory presets. Nice, huh? Okay. So you can see the numbering up there. We can use the dial to just go all the way up, all the way up, and let's see what's on 20. Let's see what this one is. To live with honor, you can see the title over there. But this is another one, another factory preset. Let's keep going. All right, so it's kind of blank up here. Let's see the last song I did. Okay, 24. Let's Okay, 25. So 25 is blank, as you can see. So what we're going to do now is assign instruments to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And to do that, you come over to this side of the keyboard with one selected, choose the category over there, and over here you want to select something you want. For me, I'm going to use these arrows to select a drum kit that I want. So scroll down to drum percussion, and I'm just going to go for the new hip hop kit 2. Okay. I'll just use whatever I can get from there. Okay. So that's the first. Let's hit enter. And that's the, the first track. So that's drums. Now if I press 2, it goes to the next instrument. And here, again, category, use the up and down arrows to select something you want. For me, it's going to be one of the bases. I'm going to do active P. When you've got it selected, remember to hit enter, and that sets it for you. So, it's got some stops and wipes. Pretty cool sound. All right, then we go to the third track. Third track, I'm going to choose, again, using categories. And let's go to the keys. Check out 
hard vintage. It's not bad. Let's choose that, hit enter. Okay, so now I have three instruments staggered. I'm gonna choose a fourth one, category again. And over here, I'm going to woodwinds and I want a flute, sweet flute. All right, and hit enter again. And now I can begin my sequence. But just remember that you have options over here. That's the record button. When you hit record, it shows this. And you've got the record type on replace, which means whenever you're recording, you are replacing. You've got the count in measure, which I believe is set to probably four or one. So after one, two, three, four, then it brings you in. And uh, we're just gonna try that. The quantize is off. You can always turn the quantize on if you want to, but I'm gonna leave it off. And let's get rolling. So I'm gonna exit. To go back, oh, I think that's it. Once you stop, the screen goes back. But once you hit this, the screen changes, okay? So I'm gonna hit play, and then it's going to count. You can see the metronome up there is set to 120. You wanna use the wheel to bring it down or up, depending on what you are recording. I'm gonna make this a 90. Okay, so it's, that's it. And I'm just going to hit record, play, and then it's going to count me in. So watch what happens when I press play, but I need to, need to make sure it's on track one. Okay. Something like that. So that's eight bars, and I'm going to put in bass now. Okay. All of a sudden, I want something else, something, yeah, round wound is a good one. So let's go ahead, play the bass on top of that on the key of, let's do G minor. Three and go. Okay. Now, if I wanted to overdub some of the wipes, because I wasn't getting the wipes I wanted, I wanted like that. I can actually overdub by, instead of here where you see replace, I can choose to overdub. And now I can play that wipe that I was looking for. So I'm gonna hit record and I'm gonna overdub this. All right, so I've got my wipes, and now I'm going over to track three. And I don't want this to remain in overdub, so I am going to change this back. 
to replace. Okay? Now I'm going to play some piano on top of that, so let's go. bars and now we have some flute which I will use to solo over it um, but it's just a very short demo for this so why don't we go ahead and I'll play it two three go <laughs> That's it, and I've recorded eight bars, and I could take those eight bars if I wanted to, and I could repeat them over and over again. Now, I'm just gonna show you what was played, and hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can uh, at least get the first part of the sequence down. All right, so let's listen. <laughs> take a little break and end the first video and um, I hope you learned something I hope you learned how to at least get your initial sequence down and just remember when your sequence is done don't forget to hit stall and it'll ask you if you want to do that and hit enter and are you sure hit yes and completed. Now you can move on from here anywhere else you want. Hello my friends, welcome to yet another DGX 670 concert piano experience. We're going to be playing around with a few songs. Some are popular domain songs and some are, are not, more like gospel. So let's jump in and see what creativity yields.
come to the end. Thanks for staying with me. Hit like, subscribe, and share with your friends who have DGXs. Bye.
jamming with my friend Keys. Thank you. 
Hello there, I'm going to show you today how to use your DGX670 as a workstation to play VSTs from the computer. So, it's quite cold, so I'm all dollied up today. We're going to take this USB cable and we're going to plug it to where it goes behind your DGX670. We're then going to take this, we're going to route it, and we're going to put it in the USB that goes into the computer. So this goes into the computer, okay? Please note the uh, actual USB end that goes into the computer so you don't make any mistakes, okay? Now, we're done with that, we're going back to the computer, to the door, so that we can play our VST. And for those who might be wondering the difference between the door and the doors and VSTs, DAW, door, just stands for Digital Audio Workstation, and that's what we use to get audio into the computer. And then the VST just stands for Virtual Studio Technology. So we can use this to play virtual instruments on your digital audio workstation. The door that I have open is a software program known as Mixcraft. It's a very simple, very affordable, just so ridiculously affordable program. Okay, so I'm gonna use Mixcraft today. I'm going to start off with something from scratch, take those off, and let's see if the signal is actually getting into the computer. So if you play, if you play and you don't see anything over here, it means that nothing is happening and therefore we are not getting any signal going in. So there could be a number of reasons why that happens. It could be a faulty cable. It could be that... Okay, so I know that it did read the cable just there, but it's saying the last USB device you connected to this computer malfunctioned. Windows doesn't recognize it. So I'm going to go in here to the preferences and see if I can do something about that. I'm going to go to MIDI, put this in and see if it works. So, all right, so I'm hoping that it recognizes it now. Probably it wants this one. There we go. So it works. Okay, so lesson number one is if 
you don't get a sound out of your DGX670 when you plug in the USB. Just try the other USBs. Okay. And this is just the vanilla flavored piano that comes with Mixcraft. But we're using the DGX to play the sounds. Now I have a few VSTs here that I could choose from. So I'm going to click on the keyboard icon, go to VST instruments, and one of the VSTs that I have to play around with is called Stylus RMX. It's like a drum kit, if you will. So I've taken that down, and now all you're seeing is what you should, okay? So I'm not sure I'll get around to editing this immediately, but I will eventually. So it's going to be rather rough. So this is the Stylus RMX. If I click here, let me get rid of all this stuff. And the way this is used, you've got various grooves, various patterns, and these patterns can be used to create music. So that's just one. Uh, this is Hiccup Island. Okay, here's another one. Data Life. So let's just take that. We just take it and we are going to, uh, we're going to drag it. Click this and drag this in there. And this is a Stylus RMX from um, Spectrosonics. It's saying switch to Tempo 120. I'm going to say yes. Switch to 120. And then I'm going to close this. And that's going to be our, our drums right there. Uh, let's do it to 16 measures. Like that. Alright, let's hear it. So, 120 is a bit too quick for what I'm feeling right now, so I'm just going to use 90 and it should adjust the tempo normal like that. Alright, 97 will do. So those are the drums and then I'm going to find a decent piano VST. Let's click on this and I'm going to choose my Oh, I don't I don't see one of the ones I would have liked because I am on a different um, bit rate. Yes. So I'm just going to choose something that's here. Let's choose a lounge lizard. This comes free with the program. It's uh it's solo so I can hear it. Okay. So even though I'm playing my DGX670, you got to remember the sounds are not the DGX670 sounds. I want to make that perfectly clear. So this is Lounge Lizard, Rhodes, it's got different sounds, it's not bad, it's chorus. So let's play this. So it's going to give me a four, a four count, uh, count me in on the count of four. Three, four.
right, so that's that, and it's looped. And all I need to do is select my next instrument. Again, find my VST. For this one, I will probably use, if I can, the Trillion. And it takes quite a while to load and might even crash. <laughs> so, giving you a warning, it might crash. Let's see if I can invoke the Trillion from Spectrosonics, one of my favorites. These are high-end VSTs, if you will. Um, about $399, $400, maybe a pop. Not sure what exactly it goes for now, but it's a very uh, superior bass VST that has samples from John Patitucci and Abraham Laboriel and Marcus Miller as well. So let's click on Extra Bass Legends. I have a, a number of favorites here. Let's see what this one is. This is Extra uh, Laboriel Finger Funk. Let's see what that gives me. There's so many windows that will pop up open when you're using these VSTs. You got to be able to uh, handle them. Okay, here we go. Okay, just just for the illustration. Very bassy, obviously. I like this one from Marcus Miller, Finger Funk. So let the fun begin. We'll close that and here we go on the count of four. Seems like I anticipated the change too quick. So I'm gonna punch in in the middle somewhere. But let's see where it happens. Okay, let's see what happened there. Must have changed too quick. Okay, let's try again. <laughs> let's see what happened. I got a little bit ambitious there with my chord changes. It was all improvised. So let's check it out. Okay, so I went back up to E flat. So let's start the walk down again.
that's it. I think uh, we got everything we need. We're just going to put one more track for this demo. And uh, we're going to try to use something from the synth family. Actually, a few. I'm actually doing the wrong thing. There we go. I'm going to choose a synth, one of the ducks. The ducks. Ducks are very helpful. Uh -huh. So I'll just play along um, and just show you what you can do um, as far as uh, this is concerned. Let's go. So I usually start off with um, just the drums and get you the feel. Here we go. Some bass.
All right, I think that should give you a fair idea of what you could do using this as a workstation to drive all your other activities. I hope it made sense. Extremely scrappy, I know. But thank you for joining me. I'm going to shut it down. First and foremost, thank you very much, subscriber, for tuning into the channel and subscribing. I know lots of you have purchased a 670 from Yamaha, but you're wondering how to maximize some of the options. For those of you who are learning and you've just begun the journey, I know you would love to see notes displayed as you play them and chords, as one of our friends on the channel requested. So I'm going to show you today how to activate the screen settings so that you can see the notes you are playing. For example, see that? That's A sus 2. You can see that very clearly. What about this? A flat sus 2. What about this? A flat minor. It's A flat minor. That's what it's uh, picking it up as. Now what about this? D flat major seven, capital M for major. What about this? D flat minor major seven. What about this? D flat seventh. What about this? E major seven flat five, the family of my favorite chords. I love the flat fives. That's F sharp major seven flat five. So how am I getting it to display all this information? Follow along and I'll show you the steps. Let's start off with a keyboard that has been turned off. And I'm powering it down so that you can see everything from scratch. Let's turn it on. When you turn on the keyboard and you've given it time to boot up, which by the way is a very quick boot up time compared to my other keyboards like the Motif XFA it takes forever to come on. But now this is on, you realize that as you move on to the part on and off section, you can see left is off and main is on. And therefore, when you come over here to play anything, you don't see anything because you have not activated the secret sauce for your DGX 670. The secret sauce, my friends, is in pressing the left button and when you come over here check to see if it does show you the magic note so that is showing me c c1 plus 5 so it's showing me that i'm playing a c and a 5 anytime it shows c1 plus 8 it means you're holding down one note only so it could be showing you C1 plus 8 if you're holding down just one C, or even if you're holding down two Cs. The bottom line is you're holding down just a C. Now if I put in a C and a D, low C and a higher D, it shows that you're holding a D over a C bass, if that makes sense. And that's what I'm doing here, a D over a C bass, or an E over a D bass. Take a look at that. You see that? An E over a D bass. If I'm just holding an E, it shows E1 plus 8. No matter how many E's you're holding down, I'm holding down two E's. So you understand that. Now, for those of you who have not split your keyboard into left and right using the split point functionality, what you'll realize is as you play the higher notes up here, you may not see those notes appearing on the screen. There is something you need to do so that no matter the note you play, it is displayed. Okay, and that last piece I'm going to show you by going to Menu. And you want to select Split Point slash Chord Fingering. See that? So let's go ahead and select Enter with the Split Point Chord Fingering highlighted. Let's go ahead and hit enter. Now you hit enter, you can see the keyboard displayed. 
you've got the split point called fingering activated. Now, what you need to do is come over to section four over here. And as you press either up or down, you can see the notes changing. Now, if I press this all the way down to where it was initially, that is C3, right? C3. Now, if I exit, I want to show you what this actually does. So, I'm holding down C. There's another C. And another C. And another C. So, this seems to be working okay. But, if I go back in and I adjust this such that it starts at C3 and ends, let's make it end somewhere really little, like C4. So I've only got one octave, right? Let's exit. So now I'm playing a C, right? And you can still see that. But when I come over here beyond the C4 range, it's gone back to my main piano, and now you can't see anything. So you need to make sure that what you have over here is actually the same sound as you have on the left. Now, if you didn't notice, when you hit left, like that, you can select a different sound. So. If I came over here and selected strings, hit enter, and now I've got strings. Over here at the bottom, that's strings, whereas up here is piano. Anytime it is playing the higher octave sound, you will not be able to see the notes. But anytime you're playing the lower sound, See that? Now you can see the notes. So the summary, what I'm trying to show you is you need to ensure that the entire keyboard is split to be just the left sound. To do that again, come into menu, hit enter, make sure that your keyboard covers the entire, that orange bar you want to make sure that orange bar goes all the way from beginning to end. All right, so let's hit the buttons to make it go all the way up. That's step one, and step two is the orange bar to go all the way up. So what this is telling you is you have a, you have, well, well that's the style, but you have the split point going all the way to C7. The style is also going all the way to C7. The style is what is activated when you are playing one of these styles. So Now, because of what I've activated, it means that the style encompasses the entire keyboard. So even if I play all the way up here, there's pretty much no sound. The upper register is gone. See that? There's really nothing. But if I come over here and I tone this down to roughly a C2, but I leave the left split point over here, what I'm going to have is the strings up here. That's the strings. But I also have strings somewhere over here, and the split point is relegated to C2. So that, I believe that should be it. Okay, that, so that's C2, pretty much. So the, the fingering function won't play anything up there, but it will below C2, if you get what I mean. 
Okay, I know it's all a little bit complicated and intense, and I know I'm moving the camera around a lot. This is the best I can do for now, my friends. I hope this helps you. So the summary is, if you want to have more bandwidth to play on the left, after you have split, just make sure you bring this down a little bit more. Just bring it down a little bit more, like that. And in that way, you'll be able to play. You also have a section for the left sound. So this is all the left. And up here is the right. So you have piano, strings, and then you have the accompaniment, if you get what I mean, okay? So let's start again. Going back to the beginning. Let's exit. If you want your keyboard to display the notes, all you need to do is come over and ensure that left is activated. Go into menu, split point, and make sure that under left over here, make sure this goes all the way. You see how it looks like the keyboard is overlapping? This is the left. Make sure that the left goes all the way to the end. And in the same token, if you want the accompaniment to be spread across the entire keyboard, do the same thing under style. Just hit so that the orange bar goes all the way to the end. Otherwise, the orange bar being just halfway will restrict the accompaniment feature to just halfway okay i guess probably the best way to to experiment with this is to just turn it on and check to ensure that the split point is where you want it let me show you another example okay so this goes all the way to c7 now so wherever i play wherever i play I can change the sound. See that? Whether I am down here or up here, it changes. Now, if I move this down, all the way down to C2, when I try to play to change it up here, it won't. But down here, it will. Okay? I hope that helped answer the question. I know it's a long video, but I'm hoping you got value from it. Bye for now.
Welcome again, my friends, to yet another demonstration of the DGX670. It's a keyboard that has become very popular in the market because of its price point of $850 or even less. We're going to start off by turning on the keyboard. There's the on button, extremely easy to turn on, and the boot up time is extremely quick. As you can see, it is already right there, all set and ready to go. I'll just go over the screen with you very quickly. And in order to navigate the screen, you're going to have to use these buttons. It is not touch screen. It's in color, which is nice, but it's not touch screen. It has a dial. It has a tab functionality to move between pages. And it has some further navigation buttons here and here and here as well. So it could be seen as a little bit clunky, but it's, it's worth the effort. Trust me, it's worth, worth the effort. So I'll be showing you how to navigate the keyboard. Let's start off with the very first sound that you see on this keyboard, and it's the CFX Grand. It's a piano sound. And very clean, nice sound. I'll just play a few other piano samples for you here. Let's go over to the tremolo suitcase and try and adjust it so you can see what I'm up to. That's the tremolo suitcase. Here's smooth time. So lots of impressive sounds, very clean and pristine, okay, with a lovely screen to boot. As far as other sounds, you've got organ sounds. Guitar, like nylon string or concert. On the more aggressive side, we've got the Guitar Hero. Another one called Rock Legend. If that's your kind of thing. Semi-acoustic. Also got the jazz guitar clean. <laughs> Moving on to other voices, you've got very nice string sounds as well. And I'll just turn this so that you can see a little bit more what the panel looks like. Here's the panel. It's very clear which sound is which. You've got violins there, studio strings there, and to navigate, you just use these buttons to go back and forth, up and down, sideways. So it's not touch screen, but it's quite easy to navigate, okay? 
movie strings, strings pad, and it's very easy to navigate, like I said, those are the selections. You got piano, organ, guitar, strings, you got brass and woodwind, synth pad, and so on. It's very uh, straightforward and easy to navigate. And on this side, you've also got a bunch of buttons there for songs. Um, you've got recorded songs, pre-recorded songs you can use to practice. You've got styles, as you can see there, pop and rock, ballad, dance, R&B, country, and blues, standards and jazz, entertainment, Latin and world, and pianist. And over here, you've got the controls for you to change the styles and um, some additional buttons for navigation. So it's very well um, spelled out, very well arranged. And at the back here, behind the keyboard, you've got you know, the, the input jacks uh, for you to either put a mic in, for you to put instruments, other instruments in. It also has Bluetooth functionality. You can play from your phone into it. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. It's got so much current day, present day functionality that if you were on the fence regarding this keyboard, I'll just say get it while you can, get a new one while you can, because they won't be around forever, you know. All right, so we've gone over most of the sounds. Uh, we've got some nice brass sounds, trumpet. Got sweet trombone. And moving on, we've got some pretty impressive uh, trumpet sounds, like the big band trumpet. Got trumpet falls. Oh. Trumpet shake. Very nice sounds. Moving on, we got some sax sounds, rock sax. <laughs> Soprano sax. Alto sax. Baritone sax. Sax section. flute here, jazz flute. Very nice sounds. Got all sorts of really cool kits, power kits. sorts of really cool kits. so on, as well as other percussive sounds.
so on and so forth. Um, synth pads and synth. That's a club lead oxygen. Vapor pad. Also in the strings and choir, we got some really interesting voices. Gothic Vox. Mm, MMH. Got one called Voices. And Chamber Strings. So when it comes to the instruments, there's really no argument. The instruments are really, really good. The next piece that I'd like to feature is the styles. And while I'm featuring the styles, um, I'll just go through a few of them, but I'll also talk a little bit about the equalization of the sounds. Because the sounds are good, but you might want either a little bit more uh, volume or a little bit more EQ. So I will endeavor to show you that as well. So let's go over to this camera and let's show what exactly is happening here. Okay, here we have styles. And to get a style going, just go up here and choose either pop and rock, ballad, or what have you. I'm going to start with pop and rock. Okay, and in order to see what exactly you're choosing on the screen, after selecting pop and rock, you can still see it's, uh, it goes to the, the list of what you have. So if you want the very beginning, you have to hit the back button, especially if you have already visited that page in the session. It could be on a different page. So you always need to get it back to where um, you need. So if I hit start, like that. So that's not exactly what I want. So I'm going to go back to rock and pop all the way back to the beginning and hit enter. You see the enter button here? Just hit enter and that selects what you are really looking for. So I've got contemporary guitar pop. And is that really what I want? I think that's where it all starts. Under, okay, under pop and rock. If you keep pressing the page, it keeps moving forward. So you got to remember to always use this to go back. Let's hit start. And now we can hear some sort of drums. It's not as, doesn't sound that active. Um, and that's because of the selection. You know, you could always choose pattern B. So this is pattern A, this is pattern B, pattern C, pattern D. So you've, assuming you selected the very first thing, contemporary pop, to get a very good feel for what this sounds like, you want to hit uh, the sync start and then intro and hold a chord down on the keyboard. You've got to hold a chord. So assuming I wanted to try out this style on C minor. I would come over here and I would hold a C minor. And that would play the intro. This is the intro for this style. Okay. So it's on B. If I wanted to go to C, I just press C. A little fail and then it's into C. Show you 
how to get a style started and how to move between A, B, C, and D. If you want to break, just hit this, and then the music will break. So let's hit the break. All right, so I hope all of this is making sense. If you have questions, you can always put them in the comments below. If you're enjoying the video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. It helps the algorithm, helps people find this content, okay? All right. Let's hit the end in. Now, what I like about this compared to my other keyboard is these styles have a lot of intentionality behind them. My motif is great. I like it but it doesn't give me smooth transitions between the different patterns for each style. Let me give you an example. Let's go to standards and jazz, right? And then I'm going to the bebop. Let's go, the bebop is my favorite. Let's go to bebop and let's hit sync, start, and intro. Now, I'm going to demo the bebop style uh, let's use the key of G minor, for example. Now listen to the intricate, the intricate piano work and the intricate intro and see how it transitions from intro into A, main variation A. And then when I hit B, notice how it transitions to B, C, and D. Gives you that fill, so it's almost as though you're playing with a real band. That's one of the, the strong points of this keyboard. Let's check this out. Now we're on, we're on the A pattern, we're on A. I could play. Let's go to B. Now we're on B. Now we'll walk in. Let's go back to A. Watch this. You can hear that change, and it's quite quick, but you can hear it's gone from the cymbals to the hi hat. Now let's go to C. Nice little fill and ushers you into C, really nice. Now watch D, check D out. Nice transition, really clean. Now check the ending. Very clean, intentional, pristine and professional. This is all the stuff I like about this keyboard. Now, I'll just go a little bit further and demonstrate how you can get additional EQ on the instrument. Now bear with me because the camera is gonna move around a little bit. It's the best way I can do this. So I'm going to uh, start off with Something more from the R&B uh, family, because those have those highs. So let's go to something along the lines of classic hip hop on the key of C minor. Let's do that. And then I'm going to EQ it. You're going to see me EQ it um, as we go along. So let's do an intro C minor. <laughs> All right, 
Go do this a little bit differently. So bear with me. I want to make sure I'm hearing everything nice. So I know the EQ is actually working. All right. So let's uh, start that intro again. Here we go. Okay. Now you can hear everything that's going on. I am going to begin working on the EQ. And to do that, we're going to shift over to this camera. Okay. Now, to begin working on the EQ, you want to hit mixer slash EQ. And that goes to this screen. Over here, you have got filter effect EQ and master EQ. You got to hit this tab button to go over to EQ and ultimately master EQ. So in master EQ, we have three layers, but the layers I'm really after are frequency and gain. So I'm going to I'm going to turn these up by using these to toggle between the highs, the mids, and the lows, highs, mids, and lows. And I'm going to roll off some of the frequencies, OK? So let me turn up the music, and you can hear the effect of what I'm about to do. OK, let's turn those highs. You hear those highs? Roll them all the way down using this, all the way up. And let's use this to go up. And then you can roll them up or down. Hear that? See the difference? You hear that? Going to the mids. Mids all the way down or up. You hear that? That's a real bottom end. Hear that? So you got the highs, the mids, and the lower. So you got five bands to play with. So. What you're hearing is just the styles. You can also EQ or put some effects on the actual instrument. So let's choose one of the synth. Let's try. Something with some attack. Okay, we'll try oxygen. Let's turn the volume up. So with oxygen, I'm going to pack a whole lot of reverb on this. But I want to show you how to get there. Again, 
you want to make sure you've hit mixer EQ and just toggle with these to the effects. Okay, so check this out. Hear that? A little bit of reverb, but not that much. So I'm going to toggle over to the top where I have that reverb and just listen to the difference. I'm going to turn it up. Just turn the music up too. I'm going to turn it way up now. Hear the difference? Hear that? And it's all, it's all from this mixer EQ. So if you're interested in getting more EQ, more reverb and stuff, the magic happens here. You gotta spend time playing with it, experimenting with it, and seeing um, how you're able to leverage it. All right, so let's turn it up. Change the camera. And check out the difference. All the way down now. Nothing. Hear how plain it sounds? I can actually get rid of the delay as well, if I wanted to. No delay. So let me turn off the drums just to demo this. So again, check out the difference in the sound. Plain, now with a bit of reverb, just a little bit. A whole lot of reverb. And a whole lot of delay. Less delay. Okay, and in these tabs up here, you can also go in between the highs and the low for the sound you're using. And this could get a little bit complicated, so my recommendation would be to, in baby steps, play around with mixer EQ, see the effect that it has on these sounds, and check out the, the effect it has on the styles as well. Okay, so back to where we were. different that sound Well, we've taken a look at some sounds, some styles, how to get those effects. Um, I'll also say that it's got a very awesome sequencer. I've sequenced one or two tracks on this, and let's go to select. 
me see, let's uh, go to user. And let me see if I can find the sequence that I have programmed here. This took quite a lot of effort to do. I programmed Superstition by Stevie Wonder. Let's see if I can play a bit of it for you. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> have the full track where I perform it in two videos. Check that out. Everything you heard was sequenced using this functionality for 16 tracks. So I hope this demo has illustrated to you the possibilities of this pretty awesome keyboard. I remember being at Guitar Center um, middle of last year and seeing it and I put on one of the styles and I, I was just playing around and I'm like, oh my goodness, this sounds like I'm actually playing with a real band. And that's what caused me to trade in one of my chords, my SP200, and a bunch of other things. And I said, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick this up. Um, I ended up trading in a bunch of things. I picked this up for about $100 after I traded in a bunch of things in a gift card. So it really didn't cost me that much. Um, if you look at the value that this has brought to my uh, musical assortment, 
you know, the instruments I have, I would say it's worth probably five or six times more than the price, more than the 800. I have a keyboard over here. You don't really see it, but I have another keyboard under here, which is my motif. My motif has been covered up for the past <laughs> the past number of weeks because I haven't had, to be quite honest, I haven't had much cause to turn my motif on. It's been covered up, as you can see here. And uh, that's my motif XF8. I'm hiding under there. That's my XF8. That's my Ensonic uh, TS12. And the picture has gone uh, a little bit little bit upset so let me change the camera and then we'll close this out for the night I think my camera's trying to tell me I need to I need to pack it in <laughs> all right well there's my like I said my motif um, XF8 which um, I have not used in in a while because this has been holding up pretty well there's my TS12 I also have a cog which I haven't turned on in a while this has really done a good job of giving me enough uh, material to um, put up on on the channel. Um, for those of you who love the motif, it will be back. Um, but for now, this is doing, it's holding down the fort, so to speak. All right. So I hope that gave you a good idea of what this keyboard can do. Um, $800, but do not be deceived. This is a, a powerhouse. It's all sorts of things. It could drive your doors. You can play your VSTs from it. It has, like I said, the ability to uh, drive your sound through here via Bluetooth. It has a USB out, which allows you to get the audio from USB directly into a computer if you were using a door. So no need for the goofy old cables and, you know, audio boxes and stuff. You can get the audio directly from here through USB, pretty much that's what I'm doing right now, uh, through OBS, um, so it's not even going through any door. This is just coming straight out and going into OBS, which is what I'm using to record. Um, also, over here, you've got an input where you can plug in a USB, so if you wanted to get sounds out of a USB, to uh, play sounds directly, like WAV files, MP3s, you can actually do that as well. I mean. I haven't even scratched the surface about the craziness of this keyboard. All right, so if, you, if you're looking to get a keyboard at an affordable price and you have the time to, to, to really dig into the manual, because I know some of you haven't seen the manual, while it's not humongous, it, it has a fair amount of, of detail in it. You know, I'm still combing through the manual. There's a lot of great content. <laughs> There's a lot of great content in this manual that I am yet to get to. So this isn't just one of those afterthought kind of keyboards, okay? And I don't work for Yamaha. I'm just giving you my honest opinion. Uh, although Yamaha, you probably owe me after this video. So hit me up. <laughs> All right, my friends. You take care. I hope this helps with your buying process. Send me any questions you have, and don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Bye for now. Hey friends, I want to answer the question, why buy this DGX670 when I've got this, a Motif XF8? Well, let me demo some of the functionality in the accompaniment, especially on the XF8. Check this out. Not bad, huh? bad.
cooking, it sounds good. But when you introduce the DGX670 and its crazy fancy intros, I mean, its intros are so ridiculous. They're good. They sound live. Check this out. Check the ending. So when you check out the accompaniment, the intros, the endings, and the fills, if you want a live performance without the backing band, you've got to go with this, my friends. This is sick when it comes to the intros, the endings, and the fills. Let's demo one more style. Just to give you an idea, let's use a rock beat here and uh, let's do contemporary rock. Let's hear what that sounds like. Here we go. Let's do this. Not too bad. Let's change it. Not bad. Okay, you get the idea. Not bad, not a bad sound. But when you get to the DGX and you turn up its ridiculous rock sound, it's got Brit rock pop, it's got standard rock, you've got so many choices. But let's check out a few. Let's just check out the Brit rock pop. Check this out. And I'm going to play the intro as usual. Here it goes. So it's a little bit mild. Not as crazy. But still, you hear that full, cleaner, narrower, at least in the higher registers, sound while still giving a Good body at the bottom. Let's try another one. Let's try the standard rock. Here's an intro to that. You see, the intros, they add so much flavor to the whole thing, especially when you're performing live without a band. Check this out.
So it's got these hits based on the pressure that you hit. It gives you a crash or a different type of drum sound like this. Check this out. See that? bad at all but I still haven't gone to rock as heavy <laughs> I haven't gone to rock as heavy as what I demoed on here but uh, trust me it is here let's try the power rock sound here we go let's try power rock here we go Well, I hope that gave you an idea of what this can do and what this can do. This has got sounds that are not as heavy or I would say even as great as this, even though I would say it's about 80% good compared to this. 80%, I'd give that, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10. I'd give this a 10 for the sound. I'd give this an 8. But in terms of the accompaniment, which is pretty much why I bought it. This has got to be a 10. I'd give this about a six, you know, because it, it doesn't bring that whole sound together full circle like this one does. You know, this has got some great accompaniment, but it's, 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 not, as, it's not as powerful as this. When it comes down to the sounds, let's go to the electric piano. I want to, I want to show you the electric piano sounds here. So here's some electric pianos on this. Here's another one, the 80s layer. So it's got a really nice full body compared to that one. That one has good sounds, but they are not as weighty and as beefy as this. That's the ballad stack. Here's a Vintage 74. So it's panning. You can't hear the full thing, unfortunately, because it's panning. early 70s soft case so you can hear it's got a lot more weight at the bottom Some nice pianos. That's another good one. 
That's the sweetness. And then it's got some really nice early sound in like the 70s. Now let's take a look at this as far as its piano sounds. It's got some good sounds too, though I wouldn't count them as, you know, as heavy as this. You know, you might have an opinion that's different from mine, so I would advise you to check out both. Not bad. Sounds clean, right? It sounds clean, and it, it's got it's got its own body and its own right. But this is kind of on a heavier, sharper, on the lower register, in my opinion. Now that's kind of lightweight, at least for now. This is a nice one, if only it was in stereo. But you can't hear it in stereo on this demo. It's nice nonetheless. I like this one, it's a suitcase. So um, that's pretty much it as far as the electric pianos on this are concerned. It's got some really nice sounds, but again, what makes me like this one is the accompaniment. So I'm gonna show off the accompaniment one more time. I can't help it. <laughs> I gotta show you this. I gotta show you these beats uh, in the dance R&B section of it because this has nothing that compares to this. I have to be honest. It's got everything from disco, so let's play some disco here. Disco. Another disco. And you just hear those songs. So this is like the, that song, Rock the Bow, right? You know, it, you, you just hear sounds from way back. It's like they took some of those old songs and they actually programmed those, these beats to remind you of those. There's a number of them. A lot of Stevie Wonder songs, you just hear them when you hear some of these beats uh, and many more. Let's check this out. Intuitive as well. Movie disco. Watch 
I got to give it to Yamaha. This is, is really, really awesome. Okay, I don't know how many times I've said that already. Let's check out some classic hip hop. I love the classic hip hop. Check this out. Here's an intro. Intro. Check this intro out. Whoops. Check the intro out. two more for my church peeps we got worship slow and worship medium which keyboard have you seen that has worship on it crazy isn't it hear those voices in the background Worship slow. You gotta love those voices, the ahs and all that stuff. And here is worship medium. Worship medium. I'm sorry you can't get a better view. Let's tilt it a little bit. Worship medium. Here we go with a quick intro. Worship medium. F major seventh. 